This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Sexual trauma is a heavy topic that can feel uncomfortable or even inappropriate to discuss in public. However, keeping these conversations behind closed doors only amplifies the stigma that burdens so many survivors. This week, we're shining a light on the sexual trauma that occurs within the military and the help that's available. Dr. Amy Street is the National Director for Military Sexual Trauma at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. She highlights how the VA's program offers recovery resources for anyone who's experienced military sexual trauma. Military sexual trauma, and you'll hear me call it MST as an abbreviation, that refers to any kind of unwanted sexual activity that happens during military service. So anytime someone is involved in a sexual activity against their will or when they can't say no, it includes experiences of sexual assault and it includes experiences of sexual harassment. It unfortunately can impact all types of veterans. MSD could happen in so many different ways. One-on-one, group settings, instances of hazing, instances of racism. Someone is targeted because of their race or ethnicity or cultural background. It just depends on a case-by-case basis. That's Dr. Jonathan Yahalom, assistant clinical professor at UCLA and clinical psychologist at the VA. Since the path to healing is different for everyone, the VA's MST program offers a wide range of services that are all free for veterans. And we do that in an environment that's welcoming and that's sensitive to MST survivors' unique needs. I want to make sure that veterans know that the eligibility for that free care is very expansive. So individuals don't need to have reported their MST experience at the time it happened. They don't need any documentation that it occurred in order to receive this free care. Which removes a huge barrier to care that's long been an issue for veterans trying to access health care. In many instances, a lack of injury documentation during active service can prevent treatment coverage for the same injury as a veteran. Removing the need for documentation is especially helpful for the men who are seeking help. While MST is prevalent among women in the military, the 1 in 50 men who also report their experience aren't as visible. And sadly, this lack of visibility has fed into a lack of research around the male experience of MST and unique approaches to treatment. Yahalom, who's been studying men with MST, says it's very difficult to find male participants for research because many would rather avoid acknowledging it altogether. Talking about one's history of MST could be such a distressing experience. And individuals have told me that they'd rather go back to combat than have to face what they'd, uh, that have to recall what they've encountered in terms of their MST. And an expression like that is indicative of just how distressing it is to face one's history. So avoidance is one reason, at least, why this topic hasn't been studied as much as just it's so pronounced among men. Avoidance doesn't always look the same. It can manifest in many different ways. Interpersonal avoidance in terms of avoiding interacting with other people or having intimate encounters with other people, looking at people in the eyes. Intrapersonal avoidance having difficulty to figuratively or literally look at oneself in the mirror, avoidance in terms of substance use, avoidance in terms of incarceration, homelessness, difficulty to be employed. It's just so pronounced. This avoidant behavior can also lead to suicide for those who are no longer able to cope with the trauma, which is why medical intervention is so critical. Unfortunately, someone who's using avoidance to cope is also likely to not seek treatment. One thing that we often hear from our male survivors is that this experience might have been harder for them to come to terms with or even to understand or make sense of it because our understanding of men's experience of sexual violence has really lagged behind our understanding of women's experience in sexual violence. Men's experiences can often get overlooked and it's so important that we're here for all survivors. Sexual assault in any situation is a serious and traumatic event. 
but Yahalom has found that there are other considerations that need to be recognized when it occurs specifically within the military. Because in a setting where service members are encouraged to depend on the military institution, and the military is often seen as an extension of one's family, there can be in instances of MSD across the gender spectrum, a profound sense of institutional betrayal because this happened in a setting where people are encouraged to really depend on the institution. And then another layer is added when the victim is male. The military is known for many different cultures, for better or worse, with one common idea being that it's a test of manhood. Yahalom says this notion, when paired with the experience of MST, can lead to extreme distress and confusion for male survivors around what it means to be a man. For men who've been raped by other men, or men who've been sexually assaulted, or very severely harassed by other men, there's commonly a belief that if a real man can't get raped, or if only I'd been stronger as a man, then I could have prevented this. For men who've been raped by women, there's a common belief that a man can't be raped by a woman. For men who've been raped or who've been sexually assaulted, as it felt like they've been targeted because of who they are, their identity as a Black man or a Hispanic man, or as an instance of racial trauma, there's all these questions about identity. And all of this arises or is in context to broader military culture about promoting oneself as a man and demonstrating one's manliness in military culture. In his own practice, Yahalom's seen many of his male patients deal with extreme shame and loneliness that's connected with this question of their identity as a man. And so, through both his own and others' research, Yahalom has discovered that gathering these men together for group therapy could help create a sense of community for an experience that often feels so shameful and isolating. Group therapy is kind of an anomaly in terms of working with men with histories of MST. Because so many are so avoidant, the idea of being in another, in a group setting with other individuals who recognize that I, as a veteran, have this history of MST can be one of the most distressing things. But it also really address one of the most alienating experiences is the belief that Many people believe that they are the only people that have a history of MSD. And even if an individual is told the statistics of how many men have been impacted, there's still this underlying sense of being alone. So to be in a room where they can look in the eyes of other men who've shared similar experiences can really lighten the weight of feeling alienated. Group therapy can also be really impactful for survivors who feel as though they were targeted because of their race. That in terms of group therapy can be a very transformative experience for someone, let's say, who is Black and believes that they were targeted or experienced being targeted because they were Black and finds himself in a room with other Black men with similar histories of MST. And to be able to say, I wasn't alone and I can talk about this experience, both of the sexual trauma and the racial trauma, be able to articulate what it's like to live as a Black man subsequent to this history, can be a very alleviating experience as well. And even though Yahalom's research has shown these benefits of group therapy, it's not the only effective way to treat men with MST. Every person has different needs. And so while a group setting could help address the feelings of shame and create a sense of community, other methods may be more beneficial for certain people. From my perspective, I think that one of the most important things to keep in mind in treating men with histories of MST is to address and understand the shame that accompanies this history. The shame and the stigma and the lack of trust. Finding a way to help men articulate these issues, I think, is the treatment itself or can be such a huge component of treatment. So whether that's addressing shame and stigma and difficulty with trust individually or in a group setting, I don't think it matters as much as being able to put into focus those experiences and how distressing those experiences could be in whatever form of treatment that one's given. There's even options for survivors who aren't yet ready to openly talk about their experience with another person. The VA has developed a mental health support mobile app called Beyond MST, which is available to download for free. It's secure. 
And it was developed specifically for those who experienced military sexual trauma with their input. So it includes a lot of information about military sexual trauma and its impacts, a lot of information about available resources, and also has a lot of tools that can help survivors with any day-to-day challenges they might be experiencing. So this can be really useful as a self-help option for someone who's not interested now or not interested ever in seeking formal treatment, or it can be an adjunct to formal treatment for those who want to have a little extra support with them on their cell phones whenever they need it. Street says the MST program's goal is to offer as many options as possible so that everyone has an opportunity to heal from their trauma. I think it can be really enormously validating for MST survivors to have someone recognize that this experience happened to them, how traumatic and challenging it might have been, offer tools and support to help them, and just really share our belief that we think it is possible for them to heal from these experiences. You can find more information about Dr. Amy Street, Dr. Jonathan Yahalom, and all of our guests on our website, radiohealthjournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Our writer-producer is Kristen Farah. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. I'm Elizabeth Westfield. 